What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to get rid of the background in Adobe Photoshop. Now as you can see I have a drawing uploaded here in Photoshop and this drawing comes from my How to Draw and Color a Volcano video. If you want to learn how to draw and color a volcano there will be a link in the card and there will be a link to the video in the description down below. But I have that and then I also have another Photoshop document here and this drawing comes from my How to Draw and Color a Beanstalk in 3 Point Perspective video. So we'll be getting rid of the background in both images, but we're gonna do this one first. And the reason I have two images is because there's two different ways to do it. But with that being said, let's get started. So as you can see, I just imported my image into Photoshop and right now it's under background and it's locked. So what we're gonna do is unlock it by clicking the lock. And now we're ready to get rid of the background. So I'm gonna go over to my tools here and it should be the fourth one from the top. That says, object selection tool, quick selection tool, and magic wand tool. We're gonna be using magic wand tool for just this volcano one. And what we're gonna do is, since this layer is still selected, we're gonna go over to the white portion and tap anywhere on it. And this dotted line indicates that we selected that white portion. But what if you wanna select another white portion somewhere else in the document? So what you can do is hold down the shift key and select the other portion by clicking on it. And as you can see, I have two portions of the document selected at the same time. So now to get rid of the white, we can just hit the backspace or delete button. And now the image has that pattern of white and gray checkers. And that indicates that the white portion of this image is now gone. So now to deselect, we can hit Command D or Control D to deselect. So real quick, what I'm gonna do is import a picture of a sky to put behind this volcano, just so you guys can see what that looks like. Because in the video that I mentioned spotlighting this drawing, there was no sky. And since we're here in Photoshop, we can now put a sky in. So let me grab a picture of a sky real quick. A few minutes later. So here's a picture of a monochromatic sky that I made with some of my Copic markers. And as you can see, as I imported this image, the image came on top of our volcano layer. So what we're gonna do is move that down and now it's behind it. So while it's still selected, I can resize it. So that way it fits the edges of the canvas. And then once you're satisfied with its position, of course you can change it later. I can hit this check mark or hit the enter button. And there we go. Now changing the color of the sky, that's a whole nother story, but I can show you guys how to do that right quick. So we're gonna go up here to image, go to adjustments, then go to hue saturation. And then you can just play around with all these different settings to change the sky. Of course, if you wanna see what you're doing, you can have this checkbox by the word preview selected. So that way you can see what color your sky is after playing with all this. But we're gonna get out of here and we're gonna to switch to the beanstalk picture and see how to get rid of the background there. So let me switch to that. And just like the image of the volcano, there is no sky in this drawing as well. So the first thing we're gonna do is unlock this layer by clicking the lock and now we're free to play with it. So what we're gonna do first is go to our properties. In my case, it's right here on the sidebar, but if it's not there, you can go to window and hit properties. And then this window should pop up. But if that's already checked, don't uncheck it. But now that your properties window is open, what you're gonna do is select the image. We're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom where it says quick actions. And there's two buttons here that say remove background and select subject. So what we're gonna do, instead of just removing the background already, we're actually gonna select the subject first because if we hit remove background, Photoshop will oftentimes make all these openings that we don't want. And it's gonna be kinda hard to undo those. So we're gonna hit Command Z and we're gonna hit select subject instead. So hit that button. And then the entire beanstalk plus the grass, that's all selected. But we want to select this as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our selection tools and this time we're gonna hit quick selection tool. And we're gonna hold down the shift key so we can select multiple areas at the same time. So holding the shift key, we're gonna select this area. Select this area down here. And then this small area here. And then whatever else 
because this uh, quick selection tool, it works kind of like a Photoshop brush, but also a selection tool. The reason I say it's like a Photoshop brush is because you can change the size of it. Because there may be a big, huge, large area that you may want to select, but there also may be some small, very tiny areas that you want to select as well. And the size you can change by going up here to this little circle, and you can change the size of it. Let's see how small it is. And then now you see how big it is. I'm just gonna leave it at a small size for now and select some small areas. But remember to keep holding the shift keys to select multiple areas. And I think that's pretty good. So now that I have everything selected, let's go back to my layers. And we're gonna hit backspace or delete. Oh wow. So this I feel is a mistake that a lot of people make. Because we selected the subject, we selected the beanstalk and we selected all other parts of the beanstalk. So real quick, we'll hit Command Z to undo that. But to invert it so that we're selecting the white, we're gonna go up here to select and we're gonna hit invert. And now we have the white parts of this document selected, which is what we wanna get rid of. So now we hit backspace or delete. And now we get rid of all that white. So now let's hit Command D to deselect. And then after using that tool, there may be some parts of the drawing that you may wanna touch up. So that you can use with the eraser tool. So I can touch up this part, get rid of that, that portion. And you can also select portions like this that go outside the lines. So you can go to your magic wand tool, click that, hit backspace, and just do that to really small areas. Like here's another one, click, delete, click, delete. But if you don't want to do one at a time, all you got to do is click an area, hold the shift key, select another area, select another area, and then hit backspace. But yeah, after going through the entire drawing, we got rid of the white portion, which means we're free to add our sky. So real quick, I'm just going to grab an image of the sky and then just import it into our document. A few minutes later. All right, so here's another sky that I made with my Copic markers. So I'm going to stretch that so that way it fits the entire document. I can stretch that by holding the shift key. And then since this is a sky layer, I'm gonna move it behind the beanstalk. And there we go, you see how nice it looks with the sky? But since I did make this sky with my Copic markers, it does kind of look a little streaky. So a way to accommodate for that would be to go up here to filter, go to blur, and then go to Gaussian blur. And you can just play around with this toolbar and give these colors more of a smooth transition to blend into each other. But that's the way to do that. So I'm gonna leave it the way it is. And I'm also gonna stretch it. So that way there are no white parts in the sky. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how you remove the white background from pretty much any image. So if you liked the video or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video.